Hello there, welcome back to Web 2.0 in Language Teaching. Um, today I want to show you how you can use collaborative mind mapping in language lessons and in order to do that I'm going to present the Web 2.0 application MindMeister. Before I present you this tool, um, very briefly something about mind mapping. Um, it's a method of visualization it's supposed to be particularly brain friendly and uh, helps the creative process. It's a term that's strongly linked to Tony Buzan, which some of you may have heard of. And uh, for further information and um, a description of how to do a mind map, how to create mind maps, you can go to the Wikipedia. Um, the link is uh, shown at the bottom of this page there. And if you have a look at this example, um, I'm sure that all of you agree that they've seen something like that sometime in their lives before. Um, what you need to be able to do the things I want to show you today is a free MindMeister account, which you can get at www.mindmeister.com. And ideally, you have a classroom with computers so that you can show your students how the uh, MindMeister tool works. And that's why your students also need a MindMeister account. Right, I'm on the MindMeister webpage now. Uh, the address again is www.mindmeister.com. If you sign up, make sure that you sign up for the basic free version of MindMeister, which will be perfectly all right for our purposes. Um, if you click there and you just follow the steps that are shown on the screen, you will end up with a username and a password. I'm just going to end ed enter mine. And then I can show you how this tool works. When you first log in, you will not see any items there. Um, that's because you haven't created any mind maps that uh, yet. These are the mind maps that I've created at some point uh, before. Um, if you want to create a new mind map, you just click on Create Mind Map, and you end up with a little node in the middle of your uh, paper. Uh, you just enter the topic of your mind map just going to enter test here, press enter and to show you how uh, MindMeister works I'm just going to take you to a uh, mind map which I've prepared earlier. This one is called items in a house um, please use your imagination and translate all the English terms into one of the languages that you teach uh, you enter new branches to your mind map by hitting the tab key which is normally situated right uh, on the left next to your queue. I'll just do that. And as you see, there's a living room and there's a kitchen. So I'm going to talk about bedroom items as well. Hit enter. And then I see that it's not very nicely situated there between the living room and the kitchen. I want a bit more room. So I'm just going to drag it across to where I've got a bit more space. As I've said, you enter new items, new branches by hitting the tab key. I've just done that. And you enter sort of child nodes on the same level by hitting enter again. Like so. Uh, you may have a bedside table in your bedroom as well. And you have perhaps a duvet and a pillow and so on and so forth. Now, if you've already hit enter and you actually don't want that node, while the word new node is still um, in blue, you just hit the escape key and that will take that one away. If you want to delete a branch that's already there, you just click on the branch you want to delete. You've got a little blue frame around it. And if you then hit the delete key, then this will go away as well. Now, you can see here that I've got in the living room if I just zoom in, I've got items of furniture and I've got electrical devices and I may well want to separate these. Um, in order to do that I'm just going to enter a new branch again by hitting the tab key and write electrical 
devices, enter, and then I can just drag those electrical devices to the correct node. Where's the telly? There we are. And I can do the same with the furniture. There we are, I've got my electrical devices separated from the furniture. There are several other features to MindMeister, but these are pretty self-explanatory, so if you just click around a bit, you will find out loads more. There's one thing, though, I want to show you, um, which is the Share Map feature, because you don't have to edit this mind map just on your own. You can use the brains of your fellow thinkers as well. So if you click on Share Map, you can invite collaborators. So you just click on the Invite People button, and if you want people to be able to edit the mind map, you add them in the Add Collaborators field. You just enter the email addresses, for example, test at test.com, and hit Enter, test at test.de for Germany, and so on and so forth. Now, if you just want those people to be able to view the mind map, you don't add them to the Add Collaborators box, but to the Add Viewers box. And when you then click on Invite These People, these email addresses will have an email sent to, which contains a link. If they click on that link and then sign up to the MindMeister account, they can uh, start editing the map together. And they can do that in real time, so it's quite interesting to see suddenly branches appearing and so on and so forth, and the mind map organizing itself. Um, so, for example, if you've got a group of students who are all uh, concerned with the items in a house, uh, let's say it's John Wayne and Vanessa, and they uh, have separated their work, so Vanessa's doing the bedroom bit and John is doing the living room while Wayne is looking after the kitchen. Um, they enter all the things that they can think of just out of the top of their head, then they start organizing it, and then a second step the other group participants can start looking at the other rooms that they were not responsible for in the first place and see whether there's any items missing or whether one can perhaps organize the mind map in a more user-friendly way. So you end up with a quite detailed mind map which is structured in a meaningful way and that means that the vocabulary will be um, remembered far better because people have manipulated it, they've thought about it, they've organized it, they've restructured their knowledge, and hopefully they will remember those words far, far better than they would otherwise. Now, some possible mind maps are uh, semantics fields. This is what I've just shown you. Um, obviously, it doesn't have to do with just items in a house. It can be anywhere. It can be things in a town. Uh, it can have to do with things in a classroom and so on and so forth. You can do family trees if you wanted to with that kind of thing. Um, you can revise grammatical phenomena. If you talk about tenses, for example, you can talk about when to use which tense, uh, what are the components to create that particular tense. For example, in German you can talk about haben and sein if you talk about a past tense in German and so on and so forth. And you can use this to start planning texts. So if students are to write letters or essays, they can think with, a, with the help of the mind map, what do I want to include in my introduction? What do I want to include in my main part? Which arguments am I, am I going to put forward? Which argument am I going to put forward when? What am I going to put in my conclusion? So the text will be very easy to write once you've thought about those things. And the other good thing about that is that you can show those mind maps to teachers. So you, you as a teacher can look at them and you can make suggestions. You can say, well, I would put this in the main part rather than the introduction and so on and so forth. And that will help students write texts, not just in a foreign language, any text, um, a great deal. I'm sure these are not all the uses for MindMeister, but these are sort of the more obvious ones. Um, if you can think of any more, again, I'm glad for any suggestions, feedback, you can either email me on info at stefanrinke.net or you can leave a comment here. Thanks again for viewing, listening this. Till next time. Bye for now.